2007 and I used to work in the film and television industry actually and while I was there I got kind of a bit disheartened with it I was working about three o'clock in the morning sweeping a floor or something and asking myself why I was there so I I quit basically and then um because I wanted to have a life and explore other things and that's where I headed on to learning about energy medicine. Um, I'd done a bit of yoga before, but this is where I actually started to dive into it and really the traditional aspects of yoga, learning about the chanting, the pranayamas or the breathing practices, um, starting to study things like the Bhagavad Gita. And then I met my mentor and I just went deeper and deeper into esoteric studies of um, like Christian mysticism, hermetic gnosis, a uh, bit of, little bit of Buddhism, Taoism, you know, just sort of everything. Um, a lot more of the Eastern mystical sides than the Western, except yeah. for just a little bit of the um, Christian mysticism. Um, so that's sort of the basis of it. And yeah, learning the energy medicine because I'm quite fascinated about learning about the world of the unseen. Because I always found, um, although I didn't wasn't necessarily clairvoyant or psychic, I always had this sense that the um, there was more to this world than just what the five senses were telling us. And I had just a little bit of strange experiences, but overly nothing particularly psychic, but it was just this knowingness inside of me. And also I wasn't relate, raised in any religious tradition or had any spiritual training as I was growing up. I was never taught to pray, never really went to church. You know, I can count the number of times I went into a church on one hand as a child. So that was never really part of my life. It was, very, um, it was just whatever I thought and felt myself. Spirituality was not something we talked about in my family. So um yeah, I guess being overseas and away from all of that environment, I was a lot more free to explore these things. So that's a little bit more about me. So today I wanted to talk to you about grounding and the importance of being grounded. So everyone's sort of probably heard the term grounded. And so I like to sort of think about grounding as um, to be fully grounded means your presence, your centered, calm. Our thoughts and emotions move through us with ease. We can feel the earth beneath our feet. We know who we are, where we are. We see, feel supported by the physical world, no matter what is going on around us. So that's sort of the totality of feeling grounded. And that's also we're in alignment with ourselves, with spirit. It's sort of, and when I'm talking about spirit, sort of the emanating life force within all living things, with the entire universe, the cosmos, and also that in our spirit and our energy, we're in harmony with the energy and the life force of the earth as well. So I want to kind of talk about the sense of being grounded in a triune tri nature, like integrating body, mind, and spirit. So all those, these aspects obviously interrelated, interconnected and can't really be separated, they do make it a bit easier to talk about different things. So I'm going to start firstly with the um, physical aspect of being grounded. And so um, on that sense, um, so grounding itself, obviously, that's very much an electrical term, which very simply means an electrical device is grounded when it's connected to the earth to allow excess energy to leave the system. And we are obviously electrical beings. We have our own form of electromagnetic energy. Quite popularly, people talk about this as bioelectricity. And it's far more uh, subtle than obviously what comes out of our PowerPoints. Um, and when we talk about bioelectricity bio in the body and there is constant movement within our body, it's in every cell of our body and it's within the energy field that surrounds our body. And so I am going to refer a little bit to the energy field and the chakras. So I hope everyone's a little familiar, but I don't want to go into too much detail about that because I want to focus more on the aspect of being grounded because ultimately the whole system works together and, um, yeah, at another time I can discuss that in more detail. So 
all of our skin, our tissues, the water of our body, you know, we're all 70% water. So obviously we're very highly conductive. And so the most basic physical aspect of grounding, which is often referred to as earthing, is where our skin is in physical contact with the earth. And um, what they've found is that um, there is one particular point on the body that is the most conductive. And that's the um, K, if you're familiar with the Chinese system of acupuncture, it's the meridian point, um, the K1 kidney meridian. And if I just hold on, go here for a second. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. Oh, Janice, are you able to allow me to share my screen? Um, so that's okay. there we go. So there you go. So that just shows you where the um, K1 meridian point is. So obviously, being one, it's the first meridian point in the body, called um, Yong Quan. And my Chinese not very good, so um, otherwise known as the bubbling spring or the bubbling chamber, you know, it's that very nice soft little part at the bottom of the pad of the foot. So um, this point, because they use um, a, one of galvanic response testing, and my pronunciation might not be um, correct, but that's how they sort of discover where the parts of the body that are more conductive than others, and this is one in particular. And so I just put here, this is um, Dr. James Oshman, and he is an expert in the science of energy medicine. He's been around for quite a long time, and he wrote a couple of books, Energy Medicine, The Scientific Basis, and Energy Medicine and Therapeutics and Human Performance. And he also wrote the foreword for the um, Earthing book, and the authors are there if, if anyone's interested in having a look into those. So he's been doing a lot of research on the earthing and he's coming from the scientific basis. And what he is finding, um, so when we walk on the walk barefoot on the earth or we stand, the advantage of when we walk, we're moving because you know energy is constantly in motion. So the more we're able to move, the more you're actually circulating all that energy through the body or all the bioelectricity through the body. So what's happening is there's free electrons on the surface of the earth. And even in the very driest desert, they've found like there's this very thin layer of these and then kind of negatively charged ions. So even in very dry, hot places, you can absorb these by walking barefoot. And these free electrons are transferred through the feet and into the body. And what we're finding is these free electrons are incredibly um, powerful, act, um, act very powerfully as antioxidants in the body. So when the, anti um, the free electrons come in and they're negatively charged, they cancel out the free radicals, which are positively charged. So a lot of the talk he's talked about goes into the aspect of inflammation and the process of inflammation when there's an injury or um, when we have an illness and disease, a lot of um, we have this inflammatory response, but uh, this is not necessarily a good thing when it gets sort of stuck in the body and it slows everything down and the free radicals are in there. And so when the positive ions get in there, they can help disperse and cancel out the positively charged uh, um, free radicals and help reduce and release that information, inflammation. So if you, you know, hurt your knee or something like that, it can actually be really useful to sort of straight away get out there, get the feet on the earth. And obviously you're going to take care of what, if the level of seriousness of the injury, but this can help greatly reduce the aspects of inflammation and the damage that's caused from the injury. So um, yeah, Dr. Oshman's great, and there's a lot more detail to it, but I'm not don't want to go into too much to take up too much of your time. Um, so and also another aspect of as these free electrons come into the body, they are sort of stored in the cells in the body. So that even if you walk around barefoot for about five minutes, you're building up amount of um, 
these free electrons in the body and they'll stay there and they're used as they're needed. But you do continue need to keep refreshing the supply. So sort of having a daily practice of getting out there with bare feet is quite useful. Um, also on the effect of we have a lot of exposure with the electromagnetic frequencies and, and um, extremely low frequencies coming from obviously the computers, the screens, the TVs, the monitors, the cell phones and towers. And they also have this ongoing low grade stress response in the body. So with this practice of earthing can counteract a lot of the detrimental effects of um, all of these electromagnetic frequencies in the body as well. It's especially useful, like uh, quite often before I go to bed and I've switched everything off, I go outside and just stand on the wet earth for a little while. And then, you know, I kind of can even feel it in my body. I, if anybody else knows, I'm a little bit sensitive to these things. So I can often sort of feel the residues and the heat and the tingliness in my body and in my joints after spending a lot of time in the computer. And then by going outside, I'm able to sort of release and let all these things um, kind of get released from my system and bring myself back into a little bit more balance before I go to sleep. So there's that side. And then also, you know, a lot of our emotional stresses, if you're a lot more empathic or very highly sensitive and you're absorbing a lot of the stuff from the environment and this will get set, um, set into your energy field as well. And then you can go out and be barefoot on the earth and it'll actually help balance and harmonize those as well. And also just work, if you're like able to walk through an area that's quite um, foresty or very heavy bush and you're quite surrounded by a good density of trees. And just by walking through that, even if you've got shoes on, it's like the whole energy field gets cleaned, cleansed and cleared just by all the um, uh, negative ions and the energy of the trees. It sort of filters out our own system as we move through it. So that can be very useful as well. So as far as practices go, it is probably the most simple and the easiest to get grounded. So that's kind of like the first base foundation level that I wanted to talk about. So when we move, into the aspect of the mind um, and just while I've got this on I'll just okay so when I talk about the energy body and the energy system so this is just a basic image you've got the base the sacral the seven chakras going up and you've got multiple fields around the body but this is the idea of the energy field around your body and the base chakras and obviously this is all a form of um, electromagnetic energy and various frequencies and vibrations and fields. So um, I just wanted to mention that. And then that's just another idea of sort of energy going into the chakras and they're, they're these funnel, um, funnel shaped um, channels or vortexes of energy. Sometimes they're called energy centers. If you're wanting to be more technical, I tend to use the word energy field, energy centers, and energy channels rather than the more traditional chakras, meridians, nadis, etc. So I'll just leave that behind for now. So the mind aspect I want to talk about is more of the mental emotional side of grounding. So often um, so this is more the, the need to feel at home in our body. So it's less about the rest of the world, more about just being grounded within ourselves. And that's like to feel grounded in our body, we can feel at home, we feel calm, we feel centered, uh, we feel balanced. Our thoughts and emotions can move through us easily. They can move through our body, our cells, our breath without getting stuck and causing blocks. Everything sort of flows uh, freely and harmoniously. But when we're mentally and emotionally ungrounded uh, and when we're struggling with life, often this comes with feeling dizzy, discombobulated, disconnected, a lot of the mental distress. You know, when we're suffering from anxiety, depression, traumas, 
PTSD, all of these things were very much ungrounded in our body, um, which, you know, then we're making impulsive rash decisions, we don't think properly, um, and obviously this can be triggered by grief and loss and different things that come up in our lives, you know, when we're all overwhelmed and overloaded, you know, throughout, when we really feel like the ground is being ripped beneath our feet, you know, this that's quite metaphorically, literally feels that way when we're really ungrounded. And, you know, obviously our survival instincts, instincts get disrupted, our intuition gets disrupt, disrupted. So we're sort of, uh, you know, in a very much state of uncertainty, which is a little bit of what's going on in the world. Like there's this general uncertainty going on in the collective and a lot of you might feel quite sensitive and be feeling that as well and then taking that in so a bit of this um, these the kind of mind body mental emotional practice can help you get grounded in your own body creating that sense of safety and support for ourselves in the physical world and help build up a bit of strength and resilience resilience so this aspect I'm also talking about is coming more from the side of um, the psychosomatic psychology, which is a bit more of um, a modern aspect um, with, the, with the somatic experiencing, polyvagal theory coming out of the um, neuroplasticity, you know, the, where the precept where we can rewire the brain and change our bodies and how we move through our environment. So with psychosomatic experiencing, it means we can get very grounded and anchored in our body through our senses and getting, becoming more present and calm. So a lot of you may be aware, obviously, that emotion and traumas get stored in the body. And um, these practices can help actually release a lot of that trauma and stored emotions without actually um, having to talk about everything that happened or expressing it because sometimes it becomes less about what actually happened and more about what's gotten stuck in your body. So it's sort of by being present, by being aware, getting out of our stories and the narratives, we can just allow our body to naturally move towards a state of coherence. And it's surprising what can come up and be expressed when we just allow it because of because the emotion and traumas that get stored in the body are not so much the memory of the event, they're the memory of the feelings of the event. So it's like that fear, you can that fear will get stored in the body. But when you have a reaction and you're triggered and you're triggered about fear, it's the mind that starts to bring up why am I feeling this way? And it starts searching through your history for every little reason why you could be possibly feeling fear. Whereas sometimes if you can allow that fear just to come up and pass through without getting to the narrative, it can be released. So these practices can help sort of build that awareness and serve the, um, serve the nervous system and help us get out of those fight, flight and freeze responses. So part of the reason I bring this aspect into grounding is, and I feel like it's something that sometimes gets missed, especially sort of in the new age, and we jump into all these big visualization practices and thinking that we're, um, which can be quite mental and get us very stuck in the head because we're thinking about being trees or whatever and roots going to earth but they're not necessarily getting us into the body and dealing with feeling emotionally, physically grounded. And when we do some of these meditation practices and we're in a fight, flight, freeze response, we can sort of shut down and numb out to what's actually going on in the body. And you can be at risk of something happening called spiritual bypassing, which is where we sort of use spiritual practices to avoid dealing with the emotions and the traumas. So I like to bring this practice in so that we can sort of keep building a foundation for deeper practices of and evolving with the energy and consciousness. So, um, yeah, that's a pretty bit of a preamble to the first practice we're going to do of um, just working out. And it, these practices are quite simple, like it's quite a complex thing. And... Um, 
prolonged explanation, but the actual practices are quite simple and they can be integrated into daily life. I mean, you can sit down and do something or you can just, you know, when you're driving the car, you can just sort of become a bit more aware of sensing and feeling in your body, being aware of the spaces around you. So um, that's a big part of it. Okay. Just check if there's anything else I want to mention before um, we go into it. So, yeah, and so, yeah, this is all about building that foundation of preparing the body to move into deeper aspects. So, one thing I, if I let people choose to do is if you want, while we do the guided practice, if you want, you can turn the screen off or you can keep it on. It's up to you. Just sometimes people find it a little bit distracting to have the screen there. Um, and there's no particular way you have to sit or um, be. It's just sort of allowing yourself to be comfortable. So I'll move this into it. So just getting yourself into a comfortable position whether you're sitting or wherever you'd like to be. And when you're ready, just take a moment and sort of can you feel if there's a way that you can just make yourself a little bit more comfortable adjusting your arms or your legs or your feet, just whatever you need to do to feel comfortable. And you can have your eyes open or closed for this practice, whatever works for you. It, it's no big deal. And then to start, we're just going to bring our attention down into the feet. And for a moment, just feel where the pressure is, where they are on the floor. Is the contact between your feet and the floor, is it even, is it balanced? Are you leaning, do they lean one way or the other? And if your, feet are, if your feet are up and they're more in the air, just notice that feel the, um, you may have them supported by the ankles. So just noting that sensation on the ankles. On the base of the feet, you could just be feeling the sense of the air around you. Or if you've got socks on, noticing the sensations of the socks and the material against your skin. And to do this, we're going to bring a little bit of movement into the body because we want to feel the body. And often if we've got stuck emotions and things in our bodies, this often shows up in areas of the body that we can't actually feel. So this is a good test for if there is a part of your body that feel, you can't really feel very much, it is a good sign there's some sort of stuck emotional trauma in it. And by slowly bringing attention into it, you can... Um, begin to release and get the energy moving back into that area. So just bring it for a moment. So while you've got your attention on your feet and we're just gonna bring the heels up. And if your feet are not on the floor, you can sort of just bring your feet towards you. So just sort of stretching or pushing your feet away from you. And as you're doing, you can just bring the heels back down and let, you can let, if you want, you can just let them flump on the floor a little bit. So you can feel a bit of a sensation going up through the feet. And if your legs are up, you could just gently lift the feet, the legs off, the, off whatever surface you're on a tiny bit and then let the heels fall back to the floor or the ground, whatever works. And then as you bring your feet back down, and having done that a couple of times, you can curl, move the toes, curl them and uncurl them a few times. And then just do whatever movements you like through the feet. You can roll the ankles a little bit, wriggle everything around, just whatever you feel inspired to do, whatever feels comfortable. And then when you're ready, just find stillness back in the feet, returning them to a comfortable position. And just notice if they're any different. We've put in a bit of blood flow to the body, the energy flow, getting that movement through. So you may be able to feel a little bit of the pulsation of the blood moving through the feet. 
And then can you feel the earth, whatever way they're supported underneath you? If you're on a bed, we still consider that earth or whether they're on the floor. Just noticing it's there and that it supports you. And then just bring your attention up through the legs and bringing it up to the buttocks, however you're sitting or lying. Just noticing that pressure underneath your, underneath your buttocks. And if your legs are stretched out, you'll notice you have a bit more contact all the way down the legs. Otherwise, if you're seated, just notice what you're seated on. Notice that sensation and weight of your body on the chair. And then as you're sitting here, you can allow the body, the body to sway. You can just let the hips move from side to side. As you could bring the weight over from one side, feel that weight move into that side. And then you can feel the weight move into the other side. So just noticing, really paying attention to the pressure underneath you and how that moves and how the heaviness of your body moves as you move from side to side, feeling all the changes. And then if your body wants to, see if it wants to move a different way. It might want to go forwards or backwards. Whatever happens, just allowing it to be and move a little bit of how it wants to move. Obviously here we're getting a bit of movement through the hips. Hips are one of those places where we get a lot of congested emotional energy. We often ignore them, we sit for a long time. So we're just allowing them to express themselves. And just being aware is you having the holding that attention in your body and holding your attention as it moves and sways and noticing the weight. It's a lot harder to pay attention to all the mind stuff. You know, we can't get into our narratives when we're paying attention to the body, when we're noticing the little weight shifts, and noticing how it feels and every little sensation. And then just gently come back to a place of stillness when you're ready. And again, just as you become still, notice that connection of the earth underneath you. Notice what is supporting you, what is holding you up. And then as you're sitting here, I just want you to allow your shoulders to come forward and just hunching forward a tiny bit. And just be aware as you hunch into this position, this is what we naturally do when we want to feel safe and we want to feel secure. We tend to hunch forward. We sort of embrace ourselves a little bit when we're scared or frightened. And, you know, we just want to feel a sense of safety in our bodies. So just allowing that and just sort of bringing that sense of safety and nurturing into your body when we do this natural motion. And then as we gently sort of straighten back up and lift the shoulders, just bringing that sense of safety and security with you. Noticing that you can stay and hold with that safe and security. You can allow some of that tension to release from the shoulders. You may find your body still wants to move a little bit. Then you can just sort of lift the shoulders up and bring them right up high into the ears. Another type way we sort of sense security, we tend to hunch the shoulders, but if we exaggerate it, you just sort of bring that feeling to ourselves. And you just gently let it go and release it all out of the body. And then just noting that shift and how that feels very subtly staying very connected with the sensation in the body. You can do that once more and pulling the shoulders up, bringing them up to the ears. This time sort of gently roll back, and just sort of feel all that tension and tightness release. Or you may feel that there wasn't any tension or tightness, which is great. Or you may notice that your body's saying, oh, do, give me some more of that because it helped release so much from my shoulders. So you can just do that a few times, however many you like. You may find you want to move your head around a little bit. So whatever little movements come naturally, but just really keeping that attention in the body. 
Very good. And then when you feel ready, coming back, when you feel really suited and relaxed, this sort of releases that tension and relaxes the body. Coming back to a place of stillness. And when we're here, you can bring your attention just into your breath. Don't want to control it or change it, just notice the breath. And you may notice when we bring our attention into our breath quite frequent, frequently, we automatically tend to deepen it. But often, just by bringing our attention to our breath and not trying to control it, we can um, let ourselves become aware of what's going on, whether it's fast or slow or it's naturally um, deep. Whatever's happening, it can let us know how our body and our mind are functioning at that particular time. We don't necessarily always want to control and change things. Often when we're working with the somatic practices, we just want to allow things to be, especially at first, so that we can become more deeply connected and aware of what's happening in our body. When we try and control everything and change everything too fast, we can shut down. And we really want to avoid shutting down. We want to keep opening, allowing ourselves to sense and feel and build the awareness. So now as you do, just allowing yourself to take a nice deep breath. Now we are doing a little bit of control, breathing nice and deeply all the way down as much as comfortable. And then just allowing a nice slow exhale. And just continue breathing in a nice deep rhythm. And just noticing anything that comes up, any particular emotions or thoughts or sensations. Because often an emotion will get expressed through a sensation in the body. And with that sensation, then we can find the emotion with it. So seeing how you go. And so with this breath, with all this movement, allowing ourselves to find and keep building that sense of safety and security. And then when you're ready, just letting go of the breath, then it find its natural rhythm again. And if you're out, and you can slowly just sort of bring a little bit more movement back into the body again if you need to, moving the shoulders. And just taking a moment, noticing, do you feel different to how you felt before the practice? Are you feeling a little bit more at home in your body, a little bit more centered, a little bit more calm? So yeah, these practices can be very helpful when we're dealing with sort of mental distress, anxiety. So it's just a very simple practice in the realm of sort of somatic experiencing. And yeah, so part of this is really building that foundation so we can work into deeper practices as we move into talking uh, about the, the spiritual aspect. Okay, so I've got you all back. Um, okay, so that's so when I talk about the um, spiritual aspect, I'm going to talk a little bit about the energetic as well. So, um, just give me a minute, a moment. <laughs> bring myself back out okay so when we work with the spiritual realm of an energetic side uh, and we get grounded in the spiritual side that's with in the energetic body we're very much stimulating that root chakra the muladhara chakra the boost um the base chakra it has a few different names if you remember from the energy field and it's also connecting us with sort of our primal nature 
uh, the general nature or in fields of energy in the little different beings that live on the earth, the nature spirits, the animal spirits, um, the energies of the trees and the plants, because they all have their consciousness. And it's often in this root level and we're, we're connected with the earth energy and we're connected with all these different energies on that realm of consciousness. So often um, with people use that visualization practice of, you know, getting rooted into the earth as like a tree or and stretching out to the heavens. Um, so unlike trees, we don't actually really want to be rooted into the earth because we're built in a different way. We're built to roam on this planet, but we still need to have that connection. So there is still an energy connection that comes out of the base of the spine and connects us with the earth, but also connects us with that field. Because like us, the, um, the earth has its own energy field and chakra system, although it you know, doesn't quite look the same, but it's through this root chakra and through our energy field that we're also connected with these earth energies. And these spiritual practices connect us more deeply with this spiritual energetic realm of intelligence and consciousness that is beyond sort of what happens in our basic five senses. So um, coming back to the energy system. So we want to make sure that the energy system is moving and our energy um, is flowing kind of between heaven and earth. So obviously the first basic part is, you know, having that chance to connect physically with the earth. And also in the realm of earthing, there are sort of devices that people plug in, and grounding sheets and things like that, that I don't want to go into too much. Um, but a very basic way as well is making sure that we actually from time to time rub that part of the foot, the um, K1 meridian point. So, in um, the energy system, there is a chakra at this point as well, and they say that all the meridian points, they have little mini chakras, depending on where they are. So massaging that point in the foot opens up that chakra and helps decongest it. And I have noticed in my energy work and on myself, and we're getting more and more electromagnetic, um, electromagnetic smog, and I think this has a huge impact on congesting the energy points in the body but particularly this one the feet and then um, the other part another important part for just sort of getting the energy moving is on the hands there's also you know chakras in the center of the hands and the fingers so it can be very helpful from time to time to give those a massage as well and doing the energy points in the fingers and to give you a bit more of a sense of energy um, you can just rub your hands briskly for a minute. I'm just going to get into this with me. Very good. And as you bring the hands apart, you can feel a little bit of that tingling in the hands. And you can start feeling that energy. So this kind of helps make things a little bit more tangible. And if you're not feeling it from that, another way to sort of stimulate <laughs> the hand chakras is by you have one hand facing up and one hand facing down. You just squeeze them together really to kind of tightly and very quickly and do that for a while and then turn them both hands flip them the other way and then do it until you feel a little bit fatiguey in the hands and then again you can bring the hands together and you might feel that sensation between the hands is a lot stronger after doing that practice so everyone get a bit of a feel for that all right, very good. So to circulate and get some energy moving, I'm going to do a very short Qigong practice. So if you do have space to sit, stand up, join me. You can actually do this seated as well um, if you need to, but obviously it's best done standing, so it's up to you. Uh, but, yeah, so it's very, very simple. So we just stand about hip width apart and you want the knees to be just ever so slightly bent so we don't have any tension in the legs. So again you can take that moment of just sort of sensing the feet, you can move around a bit, just finding the weight to be kind of evenly balanced between both feet, balanced between the balls and the pad of the feet. 
And then just do a little scan and just make sure you're not tight in the hips, just allowing those hips to relax a little bit. There we go. And I'll just quickly demonstrate and then we'll do it properly. So um, what I like to do is take an inhale and bring, exhale, bring the hands to the chest. And then what we'll be doing is as we inhale, we rise the arms up and they come, and the hands come together. They're not coming all the way together. They only come about that close. And you may, as you bring the hands together, you might feel that sense of energy. And as we exhale, we're going to bring energy down the front of the body. And we're going to do this three, three times. So the first goes down the front. The second goes down the back. And the third will go down the center. And we're going to go all the way down. I'm just demonstrating quickly. And then after we do three, we kind of, the arms kind of, we'll be kneeling. But just to show, the arms come apart. And then they, we turn the palms and we'll sweep. So bringing, and then we're pulling energy up from the earth and we're bringing it all the way through the feet and all the way out through the top of the head. So as we inhale up and exhale down the sides. So if any of you have seen sort of, um, they're using a lot at the moment, the torus field, it's sort of like shaped like a donut. So we have this, multi-dimensional donut shape. And we're creating this energy field around us. And so as we bring the energy around, it's creating this field that goes this way. As we bring the energy up, we're creating a field that goes the other way. And as we do this, when we're gonna bring energy down from the earth, uh, from the heavens, I should say, because we become conduits, well, we are conduits all the time between heaven and earth. And so this, we're really bringing that energy and being those conduits, uniting human and earth. Yes, thank you, somebody showed an image of the donut type shape. Um, so as we bring the energy down from the heavens, I want you to visualize the color of electric blue, which is a color of chi, very um, and prana quality of color. It has its own vibration and frequency. And then as we bring energy up from the earth, want to visualize the color of yellow, like a, um, a very bright, almost golden, but not quite golden yellow. So the blue is very much this yang energy and the yin is very much the earth energy. Okay, so, all right, we'll get started. So just coming back to this, um, to your center position, just taking a moment, the line of breath. So we take a deep inhale, just bringing the hands together in front of the chest. And exhaling. This time as we inhale, sweeping the arms up and above the head, inhaling nice and deeply. And then as you exhale, down the front of the body, bring that electric blue energy all the way down and out through the feet. And then inhaling again, gathering the energy, bringing and then as you exhale, bringing it down the back of the body, exhaling all the way down and out that feet. And then as you inhale, gathering the energy, bringing it above the head, and then exhaling down the center of the body. And this time, sweeping the arms up to the side and inhaling and bringing that energy up from the earth, the yellow energy all the way out. This is just up through the center. And as you exhale, bring it down and around. And then as you inhale, gathering the energy, bringing it up through the center of the body and up out the head, it's like a big fountain of energy coming up and around your body. And one more time, inhaling up, then exhaling out. And then as you do, bringing the arms down and then just sweeping them back together and up to the chest. And then you can just bring the thumbs to the um, center of the forehead and bow. So that's a very simple um, qigong practice to help sort of bring and flow some energy from the heavens and the earth. A good thing to do before you do a meditative practice to get those energy fields moving and functioning and flowing. 
can be very helpful to actually move before meditation. So all the energy is circulating very nicely. You've dissipated any um, discordant or disharmonious or energy blocks that are easy to get rid of. So it's, um, yeah, an excellent start. So do we have any questions at this point about any of those aspects? Um, okay. So what I'll do is, um, now that we sort of get ourselves settled, and hopefully everyone can get a sense of the feeling of that energy and feel a little bit different, a bit more um, centered. And these, these practices also help align all of our energy system. If um, sometimes, you know, our chakras can get a little bit wonky and our energy can get a little bit collapsed in different areas. So this can just help strengthen and build a bit of re resilience to the field and kind of get everything a little bit more balanced. So, okay. Just give me a second. Okay. So to move on and get more into the spiritual side of it, we're going to do um, a final sort of guided meditation practice. So this one you could do lying down, but ideally would be sitting up so it would be best to sort of sit in a position where you can be um make sure that your spine is a bit straighter you know you're well supported underneath the hips if it's difficult to hold yourself upright you need more support under the hips and this is um very important for being able to keep your body relaxed and so the idea of so the practices we've done previously, getting ourselves physically grounded, getting a bit more energy grounded, mentally, emotionally grounded, so a more centered to come in our body, we are able to explore a bit more of the awareness and the consciousness and the greater levels of connection to the earth and the earth's energies and intelligence. Okay. So again, if you feel like it, while we're doing the practice, you can... Um, turn your screen off or leave it on, it's up to you. Um, I don't know, some people might not like being on camera while they're meditating. Okay. If I was doing this in person, I would probably use some music, or, but um, here I don't know how to do the music through the Zoom. So I'll just have to work with my voice and any little nature sounds that come in from outside might be able to hear the crickets and the cicadas. All right, so once you get yourself comfortable, nice seated position. And for this practice, it's best if you close your eyes because we are integrating visualization and using the imagination. The imagination is very important when we work with consciousness and energy and realizing that our consciousness is directed by our imagination and how we can move to different senses and awareness of different vibrations and planes. Okay, so again, just taking a moment and you can just feel a bit centered, making sure you feel supported with where you're sitting. So we're gonna be taking a little bit of a journey so as you close your eyes, you can visualize yourself sitting on a grassy bank. Yeah, sitting on a grassy bank. And beneath you is a, a river, a gently flowing river. And as you're sitting there, you can feel the weight of your body on the earth, the grass underneath you, maybe slightly tickling your legs or your feet. And you can hear the sounds of the water moving over the rocks, the gentle flow coming into your senses. And smell the scent of the wet earth where the water laps the side of the bank.
You can feel a little bit of the heat of the sun as it comes through, as dappled light through leaves in the tree. Feeling its warmth. Perhaps feel a gentle breeze on your skin. Just noticing the different sounds around you, the birds calling, rustling leaves. And as you sit there, just noticing your body getting heavier and heavier. You can feel yourself sinking into the earth and as your body moves down into the earth you can feel yourself being surrounded by soft damp warm soil feeling incredibly safe and loved as though just your legs are sinking into the earth, feeling embraced and comforted and supported. Just feeling nice and heavy. And then on the base of your spine, extending out this wire of energy, like a copper cord or a copper wire extending down from your spine, deep, deep into the earth. And through this wire of energy, all of your heaviness, all the weight of any troubles, sinking and being sent down deep into the earth. And as you sit there, gently mentally greeting the consciousness of the earth, Mother Earth, Gaia, saying hello in your own way. Expressing gratitude for the support Mother Earth gives you. You can gently feel the charge, nourishing, calming energy coming up through this wire and back into your body. Just quietly sitting here in communion. And the Mother Earth may have a message for you. So just allowing any messages to come forth. We're just sitting in the quietness. So just allow you a few moments of quiet and silence while you rest here.
And when you're ready, you can gently, slowly bring that cord of energy that's deep in the earth and slowly withdraw it and bringing it back up into the base of your spine. And as you do, giving gratitude to Mother Earth for sharing the energy and connecting with you. Making sure to bring the cord of energy all the way back up into the base of your spine. And as the energy comes back up, when it's back up, you can begin to feel yourself slightly lift back up out of the ground, coming back up into the level of the grass. Again, being aware of the sounds of the river next to you, the birds and the trees, the leaves and the wind, the sensation of the wind on your skin, noticing the warmth from the sun. You can take a deep breath, filling up your lungs, and slowly exhaling. And when you're ready, you can bring a little bit of movement into the body, wrinkling your fingers and your toes, moving from side to side or swaying. After we move and shift our consciousness in different places, it's very helpful to bring some movement back into the body to reground us physically in our bodies. And then when you're ready, slowly opening your eyes. Now. So this was our little journey into um, being grounded and different aspects of being grounded physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the aspect of building this um, mind, body, spirit, nature of our being, the different aspects of how being disconnected in one way can affect the others. And um, so, yeah, important part of also the, the uh, sensory somatic exercises of being grounded in our body is if there's a disconnection between this um, instinctual physical aspect of our body, which is very much ruled by the lower chakras, it's like we can be a little disconnected and unwired. So when we're trying to listen to our intuition and experience things from a higher level of consciousness, if there isn't um, groundedness on all levels, it's like we can't really truly trust our intuition because the wiring isn't quite right in the lower levels. But when we can bring all the wiring and all the energy and all the different levels, we're uh, much more fully grounded and we're able to trust both our instincts and our intuition and we can build a better, better sense of um, wholeness within ourselves and a deeper level of connectedness with within ourselves, with each other, with the earth, with the greater cosmos. So that's sort of the purpose of bringing these three aspects into one and hopefully managing to take you on a bit of a journey through this past hour to kind of give a taste and experience of these different levels. So that's um, pretty much it. So if there's any questions or if Jeanette wanted to talk a little bit more about the Healy and how this connects with the um, vibrations and frequencies. I'm still learning about the Healy, so I don't know that much about it, but it sounds like it connects very well with the, um, the work I'm doing. So. Yeah, uh, thank you, Anna. Wasn't that amazing, guys? Give her, give her a, and a thumbs up. Thank um, you. <laughs> with the Healy, one of the things we do know is that apart from people drinking water when they're before, after, and during 
they need mm -hmm. to ground themselves, particularly after they've used the microcurrents. So this has been a really, really useful session for us and for other people watching that don't have Heelys. Um, I'm just going to put it into perspective. One of the things that uh, Anna and I have been talking about how we're on the same page in terms of we believe that where humanity is now, the changes will be brought through by the shift in the consciousness. And so we are both playing our part, helping people uh, expand their awareness of these inner dimensions uh, and how the work on these inner planes can start affecting that outer reality and, and waking people up to who they really are, not just a, a, a flesh form. That first session, I suggested pop it, pop it on being. That's just a nice baseline to use. But I would say over the next week, uh, if you've got the chakras program, try, run, go, try going through the exercises, running it on the base chakra. And also um, do it a third time as well. The exercises that we've done with Anna, do it as well on the release in the gold program. So that you can really build up um, uh, like a, an inner roadmap and in awareness, particularly of your base chakra, but also what it's like when energy is releasing out of your energy field. So some new stuff for me tonight. I didn't know about those points on the feet and anybody else. And um, for me as well, I, I haven't take, I walk the beach most days, so that's good. Um, but yeah, to do the stretching before we meditate and to do the grounding, and I loved what you were saying, Anna, about how if we're going to be, you know, psychic and intuitive, we've got to have cleared those other levels. Otherwise, we can't trust what we're getting. So what you're saying is making a lot of sense to me. And then over to you guys. Do feel free now to unmute yourself and, and ask whatever questions you have. Yeah, I'll just add one little um, thing here. What they have found that in the research they've been doing, they have found that uh, yeah, walking on the beach, you know, the wet sands, you've got that extra conductivity, is possibly the most effective way of doing the physical grounding. Um, wet grass or wet earth is next. Um, I mean, obviously you can still do it on a dry surface, but it's not as effective. Um, there can still be that exchange of energy on certain concretes but it kind of depends what it's made out of and apparently wood is not very conductive so i guess because it gets so dry um i mean if you're walking on dead wet earthy wood that's breaking down it's a bit different to like you know the kind of wood we use for building decks and things like that i don't believe it's particularly conductive or effective so i'll just add that in Yeah. yeah. So if anybody's got any questions, we've got lots of positive feedback for you, Anna. Denise, oh, thank you. the meditations. Essie says, thank you, Anna. I was feeling so much better. I feel so much better now. I was a bit stressed earlier on. Uh, Stanislava, uh, thank you. Lovely. Um, and Mary, thank you. She managed to join us. Yeah. Can so Essie it? says it was brilliant. Hi, Moira. Hi, um, kinesiology and um, medicine, mind medicine, is it medicine, um, are similar exercises, aren't they? Me energy medicine. Julia? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I'm just saying some of the exercises in energy medicine as well as kinesiology, um, do they do the similar thing? Yes, yes they do. Well, anything that's sort of going to get you back into your body or grounded on those different levels yes um well kinesiology or there's different aspects like there's the muscle testing aspect of kinesiology which can help you identify where there's an energy block or something like that um yes and then other parts of moving i guess they move through the body and sense different areas so um yeah yeah, because it was kinesiology that I was first introduced to that one of touching the bottom of the feet. And oh, it's okay. also an energy medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, it comes yeah from energy medicine. Um, obviously, the meridian is the, the qigong, um, the yoga. I mean, a lot of the traditions talk about that. So it's sort of, yeah, integrating from a few different aspects. 
And yeah, so I put my uh, website in the um, chat box. And so someone asked where they can find more information. And so that's my website. And I do have a workshop coming up on Sunday on the North Shore, which is going to be focused on the energy field and connecting with the energy body. And that that's very much folk, um, using a lot of the energy medicine stuff uh, and the yogic side and talking much more about the different layers of the body and the chakras. So um, Maury, you'd be probably familiar with some of that as well. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, yeah, so Anna's Anna's website is holistic with an with an eight with a W in front of the holistic holistichealing.co.nz. And um, yeah, we're, we're hoping Anna to, to run a series, maybe 10 of these sessions, all with different facets of energy work to take us all on a journey of becoming more aware that will add to you know our own well-being but also what we can do for clients, um, both in terms of explaining things and giving them exercises that they can do. Yeah, any other yeah. questions, anybody? And uh, your email as well, Anna. Is it oh. Anna at Holistic Healing? Yeah, Anna at holistichealing.co.nz. So it's holistic healing using, yeah, the W, W H, holistic. Yeah. Healing.co.nz. So I should have been with them moving too fast for me to keep up with them. So I can just, um, did I, to everyone, here we go. Oops. So it's there, and yeah, so emails just Anna at. And yeah, the workshop I'm doing on Sunday is just a small one, limited to 10 people, and it's about three hours. So we'll, um, if anyone's interested in that. But yeah, I'm looking at uh, doing some more online offerings, and I'm working on building up some more guided meditations that will actually have uh, the music in them. So I'll be using some of the guided meditations that I do in these workshops but make them a little bit more, a bit longer. So, you know, they'll be maybe average about 20 minutes. So you can go on a little bit deeper journey. Whereas then because I'm doing a lot of explaining, I kind of keep the meditation practices down to about 10 minutes. So the um, ones online that I will have available soon <laughs> will be, uh, yeah, a little bit more deeper and longer for them. Um, and which you can obviously use with the Healy device as well. Awesome. Yeah. So when when I saw uh, when I att attended Anna's uh, one of these last week, it really did strike me that you know what she's doing with people on journeys, meditation journeys, fits beautifully with the healers, um, whether it's for ourselves or for our clients. So very excited about this. Anything else anybody would like to know? That's really good. Cool. So, Anna, I'm just going to ask you then, you know, in terms of we talked, we just had a, a little talk about possibly doing maybe a series of 10 different events. We might do them fortnightly or weekly, depending on the demand of the group. Um, what kind of things can you show us that, might be useful well what I was thinking of is sort of doing one when I've got a, a shorter one on the energy system which is a, a, a sample of what I'm doing on Sunday but it's much sort of much compact but giving a general overview and then I was looking at maybe doing a series and then maybe each week focusing on one chakra and one level of, of the field of the energy body around us so I can sort of explore that one aspect um, more deeply yeah. and then um, and then explore it in a lot of different ways and all the different dimensions and that would be because um, you know with the chakra system there's sort of there's the latent energy there's the active energies and then it's the interaction of the consciousness 
between the energy field and the chakra and how that affects everything. So it's sort of, you can go into a lot of depth on each one of those. That was one thing I was thinking about doing. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and with our healing, like we, can, we can run the frequency for that chakra. We can try it without the Healy, then we can put the Healy's on to see the difference. Um, and then it's also something we can do with our clients as well, is get them to feel the difference. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I, I'm just thinking if we were to do these on a Wednesday at seven, would that work for people? If we make Wednesday at seven a, a regular time, if it was just, just type in there, would you want them weekly? I'm thinking I, I could do with these weekly. <laughs> and it, it will be a free thing, guys, a free thing. Yeah. Yes, please, says Tinaka. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, bless this, Patsy. Yes. Same. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Awesome. Weekly on a Wednesday works for me, says Craig. Yep. Yeah, Denise says before builders. Yep, we'll, we'll work it out, Denise. Yep. And I will try and stick to the hour time frame for those. Yeah, good idea. And that was good. Yeah. 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 Sometimes I can go a little bit longer and <laughs> don't pay attention. So this time I worked hard to kind of stay within that limit. Yeah, and I'll just let Sal know we've recorded it, Sal, so you can see what it was about. Tonight's session was all about grounding, how to ground, the importance of it, needing to ground physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, getting all, getting everything we need to do. Awesome, lovely. Well, thank you, Anna. Let's all give Anna a lovely, let's unmute ourselves to say thank you. That's probably the best way. Thank you. <laughs> and so hopefully see you seven o'clock next, okay. next Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thank you. That would be great. Thank you awesome. very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Joining Thanks, Janine. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Anna. Bye. Anna, thank you so that. much, Anna. Thank you, thank Janet. You. No. Right. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good night.